Right then, so um, we will begin. So thank you ever so much for joining me today. Obviously, I know it's um, late over there with regards to um, everything that's going on. I think it's Eid at the moment, isn't it? So um, thank you ever so much for sparing the time. With um, COVID that's all happening at the moment, obviously it's a tough time for everybody. Um, so as you can see, I am here currently sat in my dining room. Um, apologies, I'm not in a nice, nice, bright office for you, um, but hopefully I can still talk to you in, um, in a good amount of detail with regards to the University of Lincoln. Um, so just to introduce myself, my name is Edward Bosworth. I am um, the International Officer for the Middle East and North Africa here at the University of Lincoln. Um, so especially where I imagine most of you um, are situated at the moment with e in it within Egypt, um, I would be looking after, uh, after yourselves um, as well. So. In, during this session, I'm just going to give a short presentation um, around the University of Lincoln, a bit of an overview um, as to studying in the UK, studying at our university, what life in Lincoln is like, um, and everything that the university can, can have to offer you. Um, and then we'll have a short period afterwards just for a, um, a Q&A session, so any questions at all, you pop them in the chat bar. Um, I'll be able to um, I'll be able to see those and answer them. Um, so please just ask them as we go along. Um, anything at all with regards to requirements, with regards to um, accommodation, living, whatever it is, go ahead um, and ask away. So to get started, I wanted to tell you first and foremost about where it all finishes. So with regards to your study, whether studying at undergraduate or postgraduate, um, your studies actually finish within the uh, Lincoln Cathedral. Now, I obviously can't show you this because um, we're on Facebook Live and there's there's no sharing facilities. However, if you go onto Google and search for Lincoln Cathedral, you will see one of the most spectacular medieval um, buildings within Europe. Uh, that is where your graduation ceremony will take place. Um, it's an absolutely beautiful setting and a great way to end studies here at uh, at our at our great university. So if you don't know much about Lincoln as a city or Lincoln as a university, um, probably best off starting to um, explain where we're based. So we're right in the centre of the country. If you look at a map of the United Kingdom, Lincoln is right in, right in the middle. Um, we're around about an hour and a half on the train away from London um, and we're very close to major cities such as uh, Nottingham, not too far from Birmingham. Um, with regards to airports, we're very close to the East Midlands Airport, we're very close to Manchester Airport, Birmingham, um, and it's extremely easy to access the London airports too. Um, for our students who come to the university, we actually supply a free pickup from the um, from from London Heathrow um, and bring students to uh, to the university. With regards to our ranking, so you probably see these banners. Sorry, banners behind me there. Um, we are currently ranked 17th um, by The Guardian in the UK, so extremely highly ranked university. Um, we hold a gold standard level of cheap teaching, the TF gold standard here at the university, and we have a number of subjects within the top 10% um, of, a, of the range in the UK. Um, one of the things we're proudest of as well is our um, employability rates, so 96% of our most recent graduates um, are employed. With regards to those um, those subjects that are ranked very highly, so we're ranked number one in hospitality, event management and tourism. Um, we're ranked seventh in history, seventh in journalism and public relations, and ninth in film production and photography, and um, we're also ranked extremely highly within a number of science specific subjects. So for example, second in chemistry, eighth in pharmacy, ninth in animal science, and 11th in biosciences. Um, that really goes to attest the, the high level of teaching within our, within our science school here at the university. Now slightly more specific with regards to alumni that have come from Egypt. Um, so I mean currently today there are more than 90,000 former University of Lincoln students living across 135 countries. Um, of those a number are a number are Egyptian students. So we currently have a quite a, quite a large number of Egyptian students studying with us at the university. Um, they're currently studying programs within the College of Arts, College of Social Science, um, the Lincoln Business School. We, um, we currently have Egyptian students studying at undergraduate and postgraduate level, um, as well as having academics from the region. Um, some of you may have seen one of our recent um, webinars where our um, Egyptian um, academic Dr. Ahmed El-Saragi from the engineering um, school was able to actually 
um, give a really really in depth breakdown of what they um, what they do there within within Arabic. Um, so graduate destinations. So a lot of our graduates from Egypt obviously go into work at um, extremely prestigious um, companies. So examples of this: United Steel, um, Carnival Concept Creations, Gulf Cryo, OHA Engineering, Billfinger Deutsche, Babcock. Um, so very large companies. Um, so quite a lot of success stories that we've um, we've had from our Egyptian alumni. Um, one of the most interesting things as well from a student perspective that our alumni have found extremely useful has been the acceptance of uh, Muslim students within the university. And we have an extremely new mosque that has been built um, right in the centre of the city. It's around about a 10 minute walk from the university campus. Um, we have access to an Islamic society, um, wide, wide variety of halal food available, um, special prayer meetings, support events. Um, there's really access to pretty much the whole offering right across the board. Um, I've got some quotes that I just wanted to read to you actually from one of our um, alumni, a lady called um, a lady called Sana, who was a uh, who's of the Muslim faith. Um, so she actually said that um, I'm glad that I chose University of Lincoln for my master's degree, as I'm having a great time in this beautiful city full of amazing people who are very helpful and friendly. They respect every culture and religion. The experience of all this is the best. The mosque in Lincoln is so beautiful and only a 15 minute walk from the university. I go there on weekends to pray. It's so peaceful and quiet there. Uh, because I have classes during the week, I pray in the university. I carry a prayer mat with me and find a quiet place and pray there. If you forget to bring a prayer mat from home, don't worry as they are available. Um, and that was, as I say, from our previous student, Sana, who studied uh, management at MSc level. Um, so just moving on, so with regards to the university and kind of what we're doing with regards to groundbreaking um, groundbreaking research, um, so we're actually changing the world through research. Um, more than half of the university's research is actually um, rated as world leading, uh, something we're extremely proud of. So within that research, we're leading the way in research into farming robotics that can be seen in our agri-food tech course. Um, we're creating a new vision for cancer treatment and creating new antibiotics um, to beat drug resistant infections. So probably our proudest or our, our crown jewel at the university is our campus. Now, lots of universities say they've got a campus um, university, say that it's all very close. Lincoln is a campus university within the heart of the city. Now that's extremely rare. Most campuses are outside of the city or a university is broken up into small pockets within the city in the UK. Lincoln is an extremely close knit campus um, that sits right in the middle of the city. Um, and when I say that, it is a five minute walk from the town centre. So Lincoln, the Brayford campus, as it's called, um, is situated right in the centre of the city on the Brayford Pool. So, again, get onto Google, have a look at some pictures. It really is a beautiful, um, a beautiful city. The university campus spreads around the Brayford Pool, so everything's surrounded by water, surrounded by boating, etc. Um, so, since being opened by Queen Elizabeth II in 1996, the university has invested more than three hundred million pounds in buildings and facilities. Um, as I said, most students are based on the Brayford Pool campus, which is right in the centre of the city. But we do also have um, a Rise Home and a Whole Beach campus, which are specific for certain courses. Um, so onto that campus and kind of the layout. Now, everything that if you look at a, a skyline picture of Lincoln, you'll be able to see the campus right in the middle. You could walk the entirety of the university campus in 15 minutes. That's all in combination blocks all teaching facilities, uh, library, um, cafes, etc., all right within a 15 minute walk. It's all extremely accessible. Um, so just with regards to Lincoln as a city, as opposed to the university. Now it is one of Europe's great historic cities. Um, it has been around since around about 2000 years ago when it was founded by, uh, the, by the Romans. Um, it can be traced actually as far back as 300 BC. Um, now, two most prominent features within the city and things that you will really hit your eye when you arrive at the city is um, first and foremost, the castle and secondly, the cathedral. Now, Lincoln Cathedral, our grandest building, was built in the 11th century and overlooks the city and is regarded as one of the finest medieval buildings in Europe. Um, the city's castle, which dates back to 1068, has dominated the Lincoln skyline for almost a thousand years. 
The castle is home to one of the only four surviving copies of the Magna Carta, which was created in 1215. Um, now, now, you may not know Lincoln as a place, you may not know Lincolnshire as a county, uh, but you will probably have heard of some of the people that are from the county and from Lincolnshire. Um, so Sir Isaac Newton, you may know the apple falling from the tree, hitting on the head. He's from Lincolnshire, as is our first female Prime Minister, uh, Margaret Thatcher. Um, with regards to Lincoln as a place to live, it, we like to think of it as the parents' university. It's extremely safe, it's extremely welcoming, and parents don't have an issue with sending their children to study in Lincoln. The Lincoln was named as the UK's friendliest place by the Eden Project, um, Project's Big Lunch programme in 2016, and more recently the city was ranked among the top happiest places to live and work in the country, according to a study conducted by CV Library in 2019. Um, so there's lots of stuff to do in Lincoln, it's not just a university city, lots of cafes, lots of restaurants, lots of places to go out and, and and socialize. Um, one of the big spectacular events is actually the Lincoln Christmas Market, uh, which is one of the largest in Europe and happens every single year. So moving on to more um, specific, um, specific criteria with regards to your studies and if you were looking to study in the UK and specifically at Lincoln. Um, so first and foremost, our entry requirements. So I did see a few questions pop up on the um, on the chat right at the start um, and about entry requirements so hopefully I can um, I can go through a few of those now so if a student was looking to enter at an undergraduate level and had studied the Egyptian um, the Egyptian um, curriculum at school level um, up to up to year 12 they would look to enter at a foundation entry at the university and they would do an international year one um, international year one course at the university before going on to our undergraduate program. If a student had studied at a international school, for example, and had to study the IP, IB diploma or A-levels or uh, SATs, then um, they would be able to enter directly onto um, the undergraduate year one entry. Now we're looking for around about between 27 and 34 points, um, depending on the intended course of study, if you would study the IB diploma, um, and it varies for SAT scores and A-levels, but A-levels typically would be looking for BBC as, a, um, as an example. So with regards to undergraduate advanced entry, so if you are studying at a university currently in either year one or year two, and we're looking to transfer to the University of Lincoln, um, you could do so. We do uh, consider these on a application on a one, one, one by one basis. Um, so dependent on your course, if we have a very close match, we can look at um, transferring you to year two or straight into year three of that course. Now, with regards to postgraduate entry, so if looking for a um, postgraduate taught course, uh, we would be looking for a GPA at a undergraduate level um, of a 2.5 out of 4. So successful completion of a bachelor's degree from a recognised institution, um, with, as I say, with that GPA of 2.5 out of 4. Um, specifically with regards to English language requirements, Many of you will be familiar with the IELTS test. Um, if you were to take the IELTS test, we'd be looking for a 6.0 um, to be able to come and study at the university. Um, with the current situation with the coronavirus, obviously it's not, a, not possible for many of you to get to, um, get to IELTS centres. Many of them are closed and maybe cutting it a little bit fine with regards to timings. Um, but we are accepting many um, online options now, so and there are ways around it and we're being extremely flexible there. Uh, moving on to tuition fees. Um, there's a running theme with regards to Lincoln. It's extremely affordable. Um, Lincoln is a affordable place to live, an affordable place to you know, eat, buy food, living costs, all extremely, um, extremely affordable. Rent is um, one of the cheapest in the UK. Um, and that theme runs through to our tuition fees. So to get an education at a university ranked within the top 20, as I, as I discussed, um, at our tuition fees is, is quite, a, quite a rare thing. So undergraduate courses, we're looking between 14,000 and 16,000 pound per year. Um, and that, as I said, that would, be, that would be per year. Now postgraduate courses, around about 14,500 to 16,000 um, pounds, but that is a one year course generally, as opposed to, um, postgraduate taught courses that are often two in other places in the world. Now with regards to payment breakdowns we'd be looking for step one of a £2,000 cash deposit, um, step two of a 50% of the fees paid prior to enrolment 
and the remaining balance can be paid over um, can be spread across the next nine months. Now, of particular interest to our Egypt students, so hopefully many of you out there watching this um, this webinar are our scholarships. Now, we offer a wide range of scholarships, and they are open to many of our international students. Um, all of our student, all of our international scholarships, rather, are issued as fee reductions so any scholarship that you had been successfully issued would be taken off of your um, of your first uh, your first payment basically of, uh, of your first year so we offer a two thousand pound global undergraduate scholarship so any student studying at an undergraduate level and will automatically get a two thousand pound reduction in their fees should they be traveling from egypt to study um, our Egyptian students are also entitled to £2,000 top-up scholarships. So if you were transferring, as I discussed, from a year one or year two and coming into a, a, a later entry course, into year two or year three with Lincoln, um, then you would automatically get £2,000 taken off of your, off of your fees. Um, that's exactly the same with our Global Postgraduate Scholarship. So um, £2,000 automatically taken off of your um, off of your fees if you're studying at a postgraduate level. Um, I will share all of these links with you in the chat. Um, I'll put the scholarship links, the fees links, accommodation, everything, so that if you miss anything that I've said, if I'm if I talk too quickly, you can have a quick look um, and read all of the information for yourself. Now, what's probably most key within um, within the region and for for Egypt particularly is our five thousand pound postgraduate Egypt scholarship. Um, so for this scholarship, we require a minimum GPA of two point five out of four in a bachelor's degree and the submission of a scholarship form. Um, in the form of a 300 word essay and um, this can be wavered if the um, the application was happy to sit on a um, Skype or Zoom interview with myself where, we'd be, where we would discuss your course, discuss your reasons for wanting to study at Lincoln, study that course, your, your future ambitions etc um, and then I could give a answer right at the end of that um, of that interview to say whether you've been successful or not and you can automatically have £5,000 uh, taken off of your taken off of your fees at the start of your course. Um, Better will be able to um, put you in contact with me if you were looking to um, organise any of those um, those interviews. So please do contact Better at the end of this uh, this webcast. And um, finally, we offer the Lincoln Global Fifty Percent Scholarship. And uh, so this is aimed at high achieving students who demonstrate academic, extracurricular, and personal endeavour. Um, for this, it is the submission of a 500 word essay in the form of an application. Again, I'll send through all of the links so that you can have a good read as to what's, uh, what's needed there. So moving on to accommodation, as I said, very affordable. Lincoln, the, the theme that you need to be that you need to get from, um, from my talk is that Lincoln is a very beautiful and um, historic city. It's a very affordable place to live and it's a highly ranking um, and Full of uh, establishment full of esteem. So with regards to that accommodation it's very much in the same theme as the university all based around the Brayford um, the Brayford pool as I say put Brayford pool Lincoln into Google have a look at how that layout is um, how that layout sits it'll give you a really good indication of, um, of what the city looks like and what the university looks like um, but accommodation pretty much sits around that similar map so again extremely easy to get to um, everything is within walking distance and everything is within a 10 to 15 minute walk. So meaning no need for buses, no need to pay for trains, taxis, keeping costs cost down at all times. Um, so Lincoln really is a home from home. The University of Lincoln offers a variety of accommodation options um, to suit a range of needs and budgets from on campus accommodation in the student village to university managed developments and partnership halls nearby. But as I say, all extru within extremely close proximity. Um, cost wise, you would be looking at around about 110 pounds per week if you were looking to go into um, one of our halls and go into a, go into a flat. Um, but if you were looking to, to live on a budget, perhaps as a postgraduate student, um, you could go into a privately rented house share and rent a room. Um, and you could do that for as low as 60 pounds per week. Um, now, with regards to the students' union, lots of support there. So we, we have a thriving students' union, more than 130 sports clubs. So everything, but, you know, from football, dance, photography, um, film, athletics, you name it, there is a sports club here to suit your interest. 
and uh, we have a specific international vice presence at the students union to represent and support you so any needs you have you can go for uh, go for support there and um, there's organized trips to help you discover a little bit more of the country so going to the major cities such as london liverpool um, and access to as i said lots of cafes bars um, restaurants etc um, and lots of live ent entertainment including music and so just moving on to that theme, I suppose, with regards to support. Um, so it's very key to make sure that students don't feel like they are, um, you know, it's not too big a step to move from home and come and study in the UK. There are lots of student services to help you um, get settled. So there's first and foremost, the Student Support Centre. And um, they offer um, advice, international advice, student funding advice. There's a student wellbeing centre, which includes um, counselling services, chaplaincy services, disability services, etc. Um, as I said, there's the uh, the mosque that's very local to Lincoln, um, with links to um, to worship leaders there. There's the English language centre, um, which not only offers the pre-sessional and English courses, um, but also helps support students right the way through their education. So any questions, any queries with regards to essay writing, with regards to understanding questions they're the best place to go and they're open all year round to help support you um careers and employability now obviously with your um with your tier four visa you're entitled to work up to 20 hours per week and our careers and employability center um can help you find that part-time work to to help um to help fund your um your study time here uh, accommodation services so any troubles that you have with where you live with trying to find accommodation they're there to help you with that and we also have on-campus health centers so doctors nurses any vac vaccinations they're there to to support you with that so i just wanted to mention a um a couple of courses that may be of interest to you so we see a lot of interest from our egyptian students in particular in our msc in management um, now, just to highlight a few points, if you were interested in studying management, this program aims to prepare students for careers in middle and senior management roles across a variety of sectors. Students also have the opportunity to enhance communication and negotiation skills by engaging in simulations and interacting with real life case studies. Now, that's the real key point here. If you're looking at advancing within management and you don't just want a taught program where you're sat and having someone speak at you presenting slides then this is the course to you it's extremely varied the core modules are very very interactive and cover the whole industry um, it also comes with the option of a professional practice year so you can either go down the one year study line or the two year line where you actually go into industry um, and perform an industry for for the second year um, as i said very interactive format around that course um, the second one to highlight that we see a lot of interest in, especially with the, um, the technology going into agriculture within recent times, is our MSc in Agri-Food Technology. Now, this is actually ranked in the top 200 in the world. It's something we're extremely proud of. Um, again, this comes with a professional practice option. It's industry accredited. There's guest speakers um, from, from the industry. There's field trips. It's extremely interactive um, as the core modules um, display such things as agri-robotics, um, advanced food manufacturing, commercial operations management, principles of crop science. This is very much a field to fork program. Um, and finally, I just want to talk to you about the MSc International Hospitality Management. Again, some a course that we see um, a lot of uptake from um, North Africa, from the Middle East, um, with the booming hospitality industry that, that's going on at the moment. Um, again, as I said earlier, we're ranked number one in the UK in this course. Um, so it's extremely um, it's extremely popular. So again, very interactive format. Um, it's got a professional practice year again. So you do your study, then you go into your year of industry experience. And there's the option to study in the UK and in our in Malta in our partner university. There's field trips and industry links, and again, a real range of core modules. So um, please do go on the on the university website and look at more details there if um, if you get a chance. And um, so just finally on that theme of courses with placement years, something that we find extremely popular. So the following master's programmes now offer students the opportunity to apply to take part in a one year placement. So the MSc Management, the MSc Marketing and the MSc in Accounting and Finance. And they all have the option to study just the one year teaching course or to take the two year route and have an industry one year work placement that's in addition to the courses we already offer with placements so that's the msc in international hospitality management the msc in international tourism management 
MSc in engineering management and the MSc in agri-food tech. Um, probably um, pretty interesting for me to mention as well, the engineering facility has an extremely close link with Siemens engineering, um, something that we, that we, again, we pride ourselves on. Um, so just with regards to real-time updates, obviously the COVID situation has changed a lot of things. I imagine quite a few of you are reasonably worried about what's going on with regards to timeframes, what's happening with, um, with applications, enrollment, etc. Um, so the enrollment data at Lincoln, we've, we've done a lot of things to combat what's happening with the COVID situation. So enrollment has been pushed back to the 13th of October. Um, our pre-sessional English courses, again, have been pushed back um, into September. So you can either do a five week or a 10 week pre-sessional English course. And um, if you wanted to get your, if you needed to get your English qualifications slightly higher for, um, for acceptance. Um, we are being, I suppose the main word to take from this is flexible. The university has been extremely flexible with regards to um, transcripts. If you're an under, if you're a school leaver or, and you're looking to go into an undergraduate course and you're worried about your transcripts coming through, um, we're putting all of our dates back to try and ensure that, um, to try and ensure that you're able to get this sorted in time. Um, February intake has been extended, so there's much more, much more wide range of courses available within February that you could take if you weren't confident enough to travel in September or weren't comfortable with traveling due to the current situation. Um, with regards to those English language um, needs, there is, we, as I said, we are offering a wide range of English language courses online so that you don't have to go to the IELTS centers to, um, to take part in those. Um, but as I said, it is just a case of at the moment, we're working week on week, changing things as we go. Um, currently, we're teaching on a online basis uh, for the remainder of this year, um, just so that our students can be um, can be taken care of and ensured that they, they got home and, and were safe. Um, with regards to the situation in England in general, it's starting to ease up a little bit. We have been in lockdown for around about seven weeks. Um, as you can see, as I said, from me um, working at home, um, but it's starting to ease off a little bit um, and things are getting a little bit more, um, a little bit more relaxed. We were able to go out a little bit more. We're able to um, get involved in social activities. Golf courses are starting to open. Um, so it's, yeah, it's quite, it's starting to uh, get a little bit safer here. So hoping you're all safe, obviously. Um, I'm going to add a few links into the chat just so that you can a look at the link for scholarships you can look at the link for um, accommodation things that i've spoken about give a little bit more bones to um just my words because you know sat listening to somebody talk at you for for half an hour can be a little bit tedious so it'd be really good if you go away and have a read um, and look into what the university of lincoln has to offer um, i will just have a quick look in the chat box now so any questions at all please feel free to ask away um, and I will see now if we if I can answer some of these questions that are that are here. Um, so what are the requirements for admission? Um, so as said with regards to undergraduates, um, if you had followed the um, Egyptian um, curriculum, then it would be a foundation year that you'd need to go into. For further details there, please don't hesitate to get in touch with Bessa or myself um, for more details. At the undergraduate level, if you'd studied a, um, if you'd been at an international school and studied either the IB or um, A-levels or SATs, uh, we'd be looking at IB for between 27 um, and 34, depending on the course. A-levels, typical offer would go to a um, student with BBC at A-levels. Um, and then at postgraduate level, you'd be looking at a, you'd need a 2.5 GPA to get onto our postgraduate courses. Uh, so scholarships, yep, so obviously I had a quick whip, whip through there with regards to the scholarships that are available. Um, the key one for Egypt is our £5,000 postgraduate scholarship. Now all you need to do for this is um, contact Bessa, ask them to set up an interview with myself where I can have a discussion with you about the course you're looking to um, enrol on the course that you, uh, you know, the, the modules that you're interested in, why you want to study at Lincoln, get a feel for this um, and what you're looking to, to take part in. And then you can get an answer as to whether you've been successful for that £5,000, um, for that £5,000 scholarship by the end of, um, by the end of the interview. 
Um, with regards to the other scholarships, so undergraduate, there's an automatic £2,000 scholarship for all international students that come to the University of Lincoln. That's the same whether coming in at year two or year three as well. Um, and that's the same for postgraduate, should you not apply for that £5,000 scholarship. But I would advise you to. Uh, bum, bum, bum. So here we go. Um, so, yep, grades accepted. We've spoken about that. Um, so Maha Salim, what should I do to help my son join? Um, so first and foremost, I would advise you, Maha, to contact Bessa, um, have a good conversation with them about the right country to apply for, the right university to apply for. Because whilst I am a representative of the University of Lincoln, and it's an extreme, I, I have so many good things to say about the university and the city, um, it's got to be the right choice for you and for your son. And if you're looking to send your son to um, the UK for education, you need to be sure that you know you're you're comfortable with it. So first and foremost, talk to our partner in Egypt, Bess Bisa. Um, they will be able to give you lots more information. They'll be able to put you in contact with me if you would like a a, um, a more formal conversation and ask some direct questions. Um, but you know, obviously, it, it, the academic grades are the are the first thing that we look at, and then it's scholarships and. Um, and entry requirements, et cetera, from there. Um, how many scholarships are available now? So that's um, from Namatullah. Um, so with regards to the 5,000 pound postgraduate scholarship, those are unlimited. If we um, foresee that you have, that you're interested enough in the university, that you have done enough research in the course that you're applying to, if you um, clearly show good academic ability, if you have solid grades behind you, then we will, we, will, we will be able to award you that £5,000 postgraduate scholarship. Again, unlimited at the undergraduate scholarship, so £2,000 scholarship for undergrads, unlimited if you are an Egyptian student studying in the UK or any international student studying in the UK, you will automatically get that scholarship taken off of your fees. Um, the, only in, the only scholarship that is limited is the 50% Lincoln Lincoln um, International Scholarship that is limited to um, the top students that do apply. Um, Mikhail Phillips, could you please contact me to know how I get reduction for my son in law to study in the UK? So, with regards to um, again those scholarships. I can have a much more in-depth discussion there, but I, what I would say first and foremost is contact um, contact Bessa, um, have a chat with them about the um, the scholarships available, and we can go into a little bit more detail as to as to how we can make it more affordable for you. What I would say is that Lincoln, as a city, is a, is an extremely affordable option. Very good level of teaching, um, with, mixed with that affordability. Um, so, Mohammed Ali, um, how much should I pay through the four years? Um, so, it's very much dependent on course, but you would be looking from between fourteen and sixteen thousand pound per year um, at an undergraduate level. Uh, most of our undergraduate courses are only three years, though. Um, obviously, the American system and other systems can be longer. The one great benefit in the UK system is that our undergraduate courses are three years and our postgraduate courses are only a year, making it more affordable. Obviously then you've got accommodation and you've got um, living costs on top of that. Um, so do count, you know, do take all of that into account and then look at the scholarship options that, you, that can reduce that for you. Um, question from Ahmed, um, do you have mechanical engineering? Engineering is one of our, uh, one of our top offerings at the University of Lincoln. So we work in partnership with Siemens, who I'm sure you will have heard of, uh, one of the largest engineering companies in the world. Um, it's extremely high, highly ranked, so our engineering courses are ranked in the top 20 in the UK. Um, a lot of our students actually go on to work for Siemens because the, um, the facilities and the, and the close networking is, is, is that strong. So all of our students have the opportunity to work on um, on the mechanics brought in from Siemens. So the gas turbines, everything's in there. The facilities are absolutely spectacular. I would advise you to go on to Google, type in um, the University of Lincoln and Siemens um, link. 
and have a bit of a read. There's lots of articles there about all the great work we've done with Siemens, all the great work with regards to the courses themselves. Um, so that course, as you've asked, um, mechanical engineering, the um, the academic who I was talking to you about earlier, Dr. Ahmed El Saragi, he actually is from Egypt. Um, he's got a long and distinguished career um, and we're extremely proud to have him working at the university. <coughs> so for Egyptian students, it really does um, look, at, look, at, look at a really strong benefit um, there with that course. Um, so question from Mohammed, uh, how can I apply? Um, I would very strongly suggest that you contact um, you contact Besser. Um, the best thing with regards to the working with one of our partners, working with an organisation, is they can hold your hand throughout the whole steps. I am here to help you, and I can answer any emails needed. I can answer any questions that are that are put in front of me. Um, but the main thing is that you speak to you speak to Besser. They walk you through the process, and they can be involved in every single part of the application. Um, the rate of conversion that we get from our students applying through an agency um, or through a partner rather compared to um, direct you're much more likely to um, to stand chance of acceptance just for the fact that they've done it so many times before they know how to fill forms in they know how to uh, they know the application system if it's an undergraduate they know the UCAS process which is the process within the UK and um, they know what we require with regards to postgraduate they know the the qualifications, how to put everything in front of us. So I cannot so cannot advise you strongly enough to work with one of our partners during your application. Um, so just interesting, I set up a poll at the start of this um, at the start of this conversation. So, what level of study are you interested in? Um, we were very strongly. It was looking like lots of undergraduate students at the start. Um, so really good to see. We're really looking to push our undergraduate um, international students uh, this year. Um, but that's been overtaken, actually, by the um, by the postgraduate students, so that we've now got 54% of viewers looking to study postgraduate. So I really hope that that £5,000 scholarship is of interest to you. And as I say, please do speak to Bessa. Set yourself an interview up with myself, and we can discuss in further detail face-to-face uh, -face as to how we can we can get that ball rolling. I'm just going to share a few links with you now, um, just to give everyone a chance if they do want to ask any more questions, then please do feel free. Hopefully these links are coming through to you. There we go. So, um, yeah, first link that I've sent through is scholarships and bursaries. If you scroll, I think it will hopefully take you to the Egypt page. But if it doesn't, there is a dedicated page for Egypt. There's a dedicated page for every country um, for, from where, for where you live. Um, second link, <coughs> international fees and funding. Third link, um, accommodation. And then finally, I have shared with you a... Um, a link to a campus tour so it gives you a gives you a really good feel for how the university set out for the beautiful setting that it's that it's within and how close everything is so I really would advise you to watch that video um, if you can't see this if you're watching this afterwards on a um, on a pre-record go to YouTube type in the University of Lincoln campus tour and you'll be able to watch it there so a couple more questions, sorry. Um, so Ahmed Omar, um, do you do PhDs? Yes, we do um, We do offer PhDs. Um, these are on a case-by-case -case basis and um, contact is made with, um, the, with the course leader 
and discussed with regards to thesis, etc. Um, again, Bessa can can help you with regards to that application. Mohammed Hesham, um, is the study will be in the university? Will the study be in the university or online? We are still planning for all of our teaching to be at the university face to face. Um, the majority of feedback we've had from um, the Middle East, North Africa has been that students are wanting face to face interactivity um, and aren't going to be wanting to to study on a um, on an online format. Um, so as of September, sorry, as of October now, we are still planning for face to face um, face to face enrollment, face to face teaching. Um, and we're doing everything within our power to ensure that um, it's as flexible for everybody to to get into the country and get started with their studies. Um, just a quick point as well, sorry, with regards to the £5,000 um, scholarship, any, if anyone's watching from, um, from North Africa and not just, not just Egypt, um, then the £5,000 scholarship is available to African countries as well. Um, is the, so Mohammed has asked, are the fees um, after the scholarship? So no, those fees are at, without... Um, without the scholarship being taken off. So if the fee is quoted at £14,000 per year, it will then be reduced to um, to whatever whatever um, scholarship you get. So for example, say you've got a £15,000 fee and you get a £5,000 scholarship, your fee will be £10,000. Um, so another question with regards to scholarships, um, are the scholarships per year, um, the scholarships are issued once, so if you are studying at undergraduate level, you will get the scholarship in your first year, um, if you are entering in second or third year um, direct from another university, and then you will get it issued in the first year of study, and postgraduate it is issued in the first year of study. Most of our placement courses, however, don't have fees for their second year. So if you're studying a postgraduate course where you study for a year and then are in an industry placement, the first year you will pay your fees, the second year would not have fees. And um, that's that's for most of the most of the courses. Um, so question from Manar, if my son has two A-levels and eight um, OLs, can he enter the university directly? Um, it would. It, A-levels are, um, are based on points, so every grade denotes an amount of points, um, and we accept a, a certain amount of those points to get onto courses, so it's all on an individual basis. What I would suggest, um, Manar, is to contact Besser, um, ask them to send over his, um, his courses that he's got, um, the grades that he's got in those courses, um, they can send them directly to me. I can check with admissions. We can have a discussion about which courses he's looking to join. Um, what I would say is that my, the answer I've just given there is for undergraduate um, entry. If he, for any reason, wasn't able to enter at undergraduate level, I'm sure he would be able to enter at foundation year. Um, so there's many options. But, yeah, please contact Besser um, and they can send his grades over to me and I can double check that for you. Uh, Mohammed Hesham is the university in England or does it have a branch in Egypt? And um, so the university is in England, in Lincoln, in the centre of um, in the centre of England, and we don't have a site in um, in Egypt, but we do have a lot of partnerships. Um, I myself spend most of the year travelling, so I'm in Egypt quite a lot. Um, so once COVID is ended, there will be an opportunity to meet me in Egypt and discuss um, 
discuss academic needs. Uh, Islam, can Egyptian students get internships in Siemens through Lincoln University? Um, many have done previously is, is the answer and many go on to work for them afterwards. There are no guarantees and um, internships and placements and everything is, um, is on a case by case basis. It's up to the student to make sure they're putting applications in and, and driving that. Um, but that link is extremely strong with, with Siemens and we've seen a lot of success of our students going on to work with them. Uh, Hamdi Osman, how many years for business in your university? Um, I'll answer both, whether it's undergraduate or postgraduate. Um, undergraduates, there's there's many options, but it's a three it's a three year course at undergraduate. A postgraduate is a year, um, but again, there are options for around placements, etc. What I would advise you to do is to go on to a um, go on to have a look at our courses online. It gives you lots more detail there, but typically you're looking at three years for undergraduate courses and one year for postgraduate courses. Um, question from Hazem um, Ayman, what should I do to apply? Um, so please first and foremost contact um, contact Bessa. They will give you all the information with regards to applying. Um, they can also give you my email address. I'm more than happy to respond to you personally um, and you know, make, ensure that you feel like you have good interaction with the university and are making the correct choice. Um, but as I said, the success rate of students that go through our partners compared to those who apply direct um, is, is quite different. So please do engage with our partners, for example, um, for example, Visa. Um, they will be able to give you all the advice and walk you step by step right the way through the application process. They've done it thousands of, upon thousands of times um, and know how to get these things right. Um, internship, um, I've seen a question here for internship requirements. Everything is on a um, on a case by case basis. It depends on the course, depends on the um, depends on the company, and uh, depends on the links that we have. What I can say is the placements that we um, that we offer are done on a um, on an individual year by year basis. Um, the university helps with all the support, uh, but it is down to the student to ensure that they are doing the work with regards to. Um, you know, making those links and um, and making the most of the of the partnerships that we that we have. Uh, so, a question from Islam Ahmed, if the Masters is achieved successfully in a year, is there any opportunity to continue for the PhD in Lincoln or finding job opportunities? Yeah, very good question, there's a few answers to this. Um, so first and foremost, yes, lots of opportunity to continue in PhD. That is discussed specifically with the programme leader, um, and as I say, thesis has to be accepted and there's, there's, a, there's a few things around that, but the best way to go about that obviously is having studied a, um, you know, having studied a master's here um, and then build those relationships. With regards to 
um, job opportunities in Lincoln in the UK as a whole. Um, the you know the industry is pretty pretty thriving at the moment. It depends what course you're going in or you will have studied, obviously. Um, but there is also the post study option. Um, so the option to work in the UK for two years after after studying. Um, there is a visa. There is a visa specifically for that. Now, I'm not a visa expert, so I can't actually give you advice as to how that would be, um, how that's applied for, what the terms and conditions are. But post studying, there is the opportunity to apply for a two year working visa. Um, so, question from Omar. I am an American DIP student. Is it a must? to have um, SATs. Um, if looking to go into undergraduate and you've studied, um, studied the American system, um, then yeah, we would need, we would need SATs um, in that case. We also accept the IB, um, we accept A-levels um, as well for undergraduate entry. Um, I'm not sure if you saw. I did share my email address in the um, in the chat as well. If anyone does want to email me with any questions or needs um, Bess's um, Bess's contact details, I'll be more than happy to to help you out there. A question from Mohammed: May you tell us again the available fields in the university? Um, it's pretty wide ranging, to to be honest. I'm not going to be able to answer every single. Um, every single course there. However, I will be able to give you a list of the schools. Um, two seconds for me and I will just get that up for you. Um, I mean, the, the best rule to, to stick with is if a university in the UK offers that course, the likelihood is that the University of Lincoln will. And um, the fact that we're ranked in the top 20 from the Guardian um, is it, that would that wouldn't happen if we didn't offer a very, very wide range of courses. Um, so we have the College of Arts. And um, so within that, we've got the Lincoln School of Architecture in the built envir environment, Lincoln School of Design, Lincoln School of Film and Media. Lincoln, the School of English and Journalism, School of Fine and Performing Arts, the School of History and Heritage. Then we've got the College of Science. Within that, we have the School of Chemistry, School of Computer Science, School of Engineering, School of Geography, School of Life Sciences, School of Mathematics and Physics, School of Pharmacy, National Centre for Food Manufacturing, and the Lincoln Ag Institute for Agri-Food Technology. Then we have the College of Social Science. So within that, we've got the School of Education, School of Health and Social Care, Professional Development Centre, uh, the Lincoln Law School, School of Psychology, School of Social and Political Sciences, School of Sport and Exercise Science. And then we've got the Lincoln International Business School, which includes accountancy, advertising, banking, business studies, economics, enterprise development, events management, finance, international business management, international hospitality management, marketing, sports business management and tourism. So an example there of why I'm, I'm not able to, to memorize those, unfortunately, because there, there are rather a lot. Um, I, here's a question. I graduated from Minia University Faculty of Arts English Department. I want to study computer science. Fantastic. Our computer science course um, is extremely good. We get a lot of international applicants and it's extremely popular. Um, and people go on to do great, great, great things following it. Our whole science offering um, is fantastic. The science building. I mean, as I say, I, I'm, I'm disappointed I can't show you things now. Please do go on to, on to Google, type in Lincoln School of Science, have a look at the buildings, have a look at the facilities that we have. They are absolutely fantastic. Um, so just advice as to how to look at applying to that if you're looking to um, study computer science at, um, at a master's level. So first, first and foremost, if you um, live in Egypt currently, um, as I say, you can you can apply for that five thousand um, pound scholarship um, pretty easily. Um, that's again across all of the African nations as well as Pakistan and Turkey. Um, please contact Bessa, have a chat with them. Um, they will be able to put you in contact with me. They'll be able to guide you through the application process. Um, but yeah, that, no, that, that's really positive news. I'd I'd love to meet you in um, 
in either whether it's October, whether it's February next year, whether it's September the year after, um, if you were looking to study computer science. Uh, Islam Ahmed, I have my accommodation in London with my resident brother there. Would that make me more eligible beside my papers submitted? Um, it wouldn't do, what it would do is make everything a lot more affordable if you had somewhere to, um, had somewhere to live already. Um, with regards to applications, it, it comes down to um, the grades you have, the qualifications you have. Um, you know, as I said, if you if you have the grades at um, undergrad if you've got a 2.5 GPA and you're looking to apply for one of our courses there's no reason why you wouldn't get onto it um, and there's no reason why you wouldn't be given a £5,000 scholarship should you um, currently be domiciling in Egypt. No, Mohammed Hesham, not a problem at all, happy to, happy to help. Perfect. So I think that's that's about it then with regards to questions. Um, as I said, at the bot at the top of this link, you'll see some um, you'll see some links. Please do click on them. Please do go and read about the university. Um, the strongest things that we that that really bring to life what we offer here at Lincoln is the city itself. Go and have a look at um, you know how great how magnificent the cathedral is. Look at the castle. Um, go and look at our Brayford campus. Look how close everything is. Look at the um the modern facilities the the fantastic um the fantastic facilities that we have i myself am a graduate of the university i was unfortunately it is 10 years ago now i'm, I'm getting a little bit old um but i had a fantastic time there and most you know our, our international students have a great time here at the university of lincoln um any questions please do get in contact with Bessa or um, contact me on that email address that i posted Thank you ever so much for, uh, for listening and uh, yeah, hope to speak to you soon.